Hi everyone, we are still here at IATS and I am here with Faisal Bakin. Faisal Bakin is a cardiovascular surgeon and he is the director of the Coronary Center for Cleveland Clinic. So, hi, thank you very much for uh, being here with us in this interview. Thank you, Lauren. It's a huge honor here to be with you. I'm a huge fan of you <laughs> and CTSNet. So, uh, I'm here to answer your questions and uh, it's going to be lively and in interactive between the both of us. Yeah, that's uh, the whole idea. So, yes. so, you are the director of the Coronary Center. Yes. What is the Coronary Center? What are the goals? What was it uh, created for? Yeah, well, good question. So, um, like with mitral valve and other disciplines, um, cabbage, especially elective cabbage, is no longer the generic operation that it is. Maybe emergency cabbage, any cardiac surgeon can do and do well to save a life. But, you know, elective cabbage is more nuanced. There's a multi arterial grafting, there's mm -hmm. redos, there's stentectomies and artrectomies, there's coronary fistulas, aneurysms. So it's a very nuanced field and it requires particular skill and experience to do it well to get the best outcomes. So when we talk about a center of excellence, there's a precedence. Like I mentioned in the mitral valve, there are centers of excellence for repair that have a high percentage of repair that have robotics involved in their program. You could do the same model really for coronary bypass. So make sure that there's a niche available for minimally invasive coronary vascularization, a niche for multi arterial grafting, complex procedures. And these are the kind of things that distinguish it and always monitor quality and outcomes. We have a center of excellence in the, the place I, that I work at Fundación Cardiovascular de Colombia. And we are always looking at this center uh, in Cleveland. Of course, it's a reference center. And uh, do you do innovation with, uh, with the Center of Excellence? Yes, you know, so innovation is one of, our, of the pillars of the Cleveland Clinic because you can't move the field without innovations, but it's the thoughtful application of innovations. So when a new technology comes out, um, you assess it, evaluate it, and see what data is available. And if you believe in it and believe that it's safe and effective, then you try it out and incrementally uh, make progress uh, for the benefit of the patient. Just simple things like measuring flow in uh, grafts as you do them, especially when you do complex multi-arterial reconstructs. Uh, for example, that's the technology that we believe in. Robotics had made the uh, mid-cab robotic-assisted harvesting um, a much better and easier task because you could take a longer mammary when you harvest it with a robot and simplify the mid-cab and as you become better at those things, then you think about wider applications, for example, of the robotics. We are perhaps in an era where people are young and interested in technology. You can't recruit people, you can't claim that you have a center of excellence if you're doing the same cabbage that was done in the 1960s and 70s. That's perfect. So, I have another question. In yeah. this same order of ideas, do you think there is a need for a subspecialty in coronary surgery? I think I know the answer and you know the yeah. answer. <laughs> I think we'll both say <laughs> resounding yes. I, I, I really do think so because if you look at the board requirements, at least in, in America, they're really trivial. I mean, they don't really qualify you and make you ready for the real world um, super specialized cabbages that I was talking about. I really think that there should be a subspecialty and I recommend um, our graduates and trainees who like cabbage to consider going to centers of excellence, spending time. It could be observation, it could be um, a short fellowship, or it could be a one-year or two-year fellowship, depending on how much you want to do and how much you want to learn. Mm -hmm. And would you say there's, of course, there is an article published about the steps that you need to follow. Yes. What are the steps for you? The steps to follow to yeah, become to be a, a specialist? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think incrementally. I think you want to start doing a straightforward cabbage really well, then introduce the radial graft, then you introduce the bilateral mammary, then you introduce the off-pump. Uh, ideally, you've trained at a place that does off-pump, and then start doing it less and less and less invasively without hurting your outcomes and the patient. So if you do it thoughtfully, incrementally, and have a good mentor, I mean, you're a mentor to multiple people at your institutions, and, and that's key, to have a mentor, to have a senior surgeon, to, to support you, to guide you, and you learn from each other. I mean, 
I think every single step in the future of our speciality or subspeciality should be made up of two components, senior leadership and juniors, because if we think about the next iteration of cabbage, it is for the next generation, not for us. Okay. Now I want to ask something that has been kind of controversial. Oh. And you know where I'm going. I think I know where so you're going. So the guidelines. Yeah. The guidelines were released, the yeah. American guidelines, the European guidelines, yeah. not endorsed, but uh, at least the most vast majority yeah. of uh, cardiothoracic surgery yeah. associations. Yeah. What happened? What is your thinking on that? Well, I tell you what, it's such a hot topic, I'm beginning to sweat here, so I'm going to like wipe <laughs> my sweat. That, uh, so <laughs> I, I think that, um, you know, the 2021 ACCHA guidelines surprised everybody. I think they downgraded cabbage without any evidence. Uh, we have strongly made the argument with evidence, with data, why those uh, recommendations were inaccurate. And we were persistent in that. And I'm very pleased to say that the European guidelines that were in, endorsed by EACT um, were just released and they align very well with what the surgeons in North America and in fact globally were saying all along, that cabbage improves survival in uh, multi-vessel coronary artery disease regardless of the ejection fraction, specifically in complex multi-vessel disease. And I think the fact that there's no new data to dispel that finding, to dispel that fact, doesn't mean that it is no longer accurate. And in fact, they keep saying those are old trials, but medical management has improved, but so did cabbage. I mean, cabbage nowadays, for example, in the FAME 3 trial, the mortality, 30-day mortality, was three in a thousand, identical to that of PCI. And we shouldn't forget that we also emphasize the importance of compliance with medical therapy. So cabbage plus optimal medical therapy is the way to go. And I'm really glad that the Europeans have collaborated, the cardiologists and the surgeons. And by the way, this document, the European guideline document on chronic coronary syndromes was reviewed by 53 national cardiology associations. So it was extremely vetted. It was very robust. It was evidence-based. It was transparent. And that's why we fully endorse it and support it. That is great to know. Okay, so anything you want to say to the audience, tips and tricks? I think cabbage is a wonderful procedure. You love it, I love it. Um, I think we're gonna make sure that we do the best operation for our patients. Uh, cabbage is here to stay. Nothing competes effectively with cabbage. We keep talking about cabbage as providing surgical collateralization. A stent is more like resurfacing rather than revascularizing. Um, and, and for you as the next generation, it's a bright future. And make sure that you do it and you do it well. Visit centers of excellence, up your game gradually, and it will be extremely gratifying to you and beneficial to your patients. Thank you very much, Faisal, for this interview. Thank you. It was a pleasure. pleasure to have you here. Uh, I love talking to you and enjoyed this. Thank you very much.